Welcome. Welcome. The Shade in the City. In the city. I'm Trees. It's Nels. And today we are jumping right back into Ready to Love, season five, episode four. I, yeah, that's correct now, four. <laughs> so I'd like sure to thank you, you guys for time. joining us. Make sure you hit the like button as you're coming in. And let's get into it, y'all. And let's see what new curveballs Tommy got for us. Let's get shady. Welcome back. We are in the gentleman's lounge right now. Yes, we you are. Know, nephew, nephew Tommy is talking with the guys, letting them know that it's time for you guys to make a decision. Y'all going to choose, you know, which lady goes home tonight. But first, I'm bringing two new singles, a man and a woman. Curve and ball. Huh? Exactly. Curveball. Curve ball. And at this moment, Demetrius is, is kind of thinking about the connections that he's made or how strong his connections are. And I'm thinking, like, why? You weren't worried about that when you were sitting in the back of that bus? Not talking to nobody. I feel like you didn't have a connection with nobody. Now you worried? Now that two new singles is coming? Sir, it's giving insecure. Oh. <laughs> but, for, but for a good reason, because <laughs> it is what it is. So, you know, uh nephew tommy basically you know let's wiley know you know the women are worried about your youth sir so what i did was i brought in a little young little tenderoni for you for you to go out on a blind date and wiley's like mm. he can't wait rubs hands like bird man okay <laughs> he's like i can handle that i got it i got it so you know, as the guy's getting up, I thought it was funny. Nephew Tommy's up there making jokes on him. Oh, your slim suit. And you know that yellow shirt don't fit you, homie. Like, you know, playing with the guys. I thought it was, I thought it was. Well, no, funny. when, when Wiley got up and he walked out, I was like, that shirt is tight. He's trying to show up the muscles, girl, the muscles. The muscles would still show at the shirt fit. He's trying to show the world. He's trying to make sure the world see. Okay. You know, like like what like precious say the because the puma there don't want him so he's trying to see if anybody else in the world around his age might want him I, I guess I ain't mad we have Donna I'm sorry Wiley on retract his blind date look look, look retract Tina, that <laughs> with Tina 31 who is an esthetician esthetician um, yes um she basically she touches on her past relationship she says she was in a toxic relationship this motherfucker cheated on her when she was six months pregnant mm. and she left and never looked back good for you boo good for you because i feel like most women especially you know in pregnant with place. their first child especially with their first child would be super scared super worried about you know what life is like with after you know after him and with a child alone. So the fact that she never looked back and she is blessed and highly favored um, now. So she had the girls needs, sitting up. She had the girls. Yes, sitting she, up to the yes, she does. Yes. Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really see her face right here. All you see is the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so. She sits down with Wiley and, um, you know, they're getting well acquainted. You know, they're like, oh, you matched my fly. We both got on green, you know, great minds. And um, they're really just admiring how good each other looks. Wiley is really, really liking her. He thinks she is super cute, super fly. And look, she likes his muscles. She liked the muscles. I don't know how, how tight his shirt was here. But clearly she was able to see the muscles because she was saying that, uh, you know, he looked good. And Wiley is over there like a little, little smitten, little kitten. 
Um, so, you know, he touches on her past relationship and she was like, it was toxic. Um, that it was two and a half years ago. Um, but with that relationship, she had planned to be married. So she did things, you know, I guess like a wife would do, um, because she expected forever and, you know, that didn't happen. And right now she is looking for the Martin to her Gina, as she said. And, um, basically Wiley, Wiley is with that. He's feeling that. He's, I guess he's looking for Gina too. We get into Miss Precious on her blind date with newcomer Donovan, who is 42 and he is a realtor. Now, I'm gonna let Nels handle this because I don't think that I can say it carefully, but let me just tell you about Donovan. He's originally- Yes. You trusting me? Yeah, I'm trusting you. But oh. anyway- um, Donovan is originally from Los Angeles. He grew up around all women. So um, he feels like he knows how to cater to and care for women. Um, Precious loves his strong masculine presence. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's attracted to Precious as well. Um, And he even notes that he mentioned he likes taller women. So basically. Look, look, we out of that. So I was like, okay, that's cute. They, They, good job, Tommy. Um, I think where it went left, I'm going to let Nels take over on this one. Well, we're going to touch on him a little bit more. So she does ask, I mean, she, she did delve in a little, a little bit before she got to the, to the bullshit. Um, she did ask him, you know, have you been married before? He said, yes, he, for 12 years, but he made some mistakes, which he didn't exactly touch on, but I thought it was funny because he was talking about how he was raised by all women and, you know, he knows how to love, protect and, you know, whatever. Okay. You know, I'm not here to judge, but yeah, I mean, I would think that the women that you were raised by wouldn't think too highly of highly of that, but, um, basically, you know, she lets him know that she's been single for nine years and celibate for six months, which um, no one asked. No, no one asked. I don't know question. where that came from because they were talking about relationships and not sex. So I'm not sure why that even came up. And um, she lets him. He's like, he's like you know, you know basically he sees that she is attentive and she's like yes my senses are pleasantly aroused. Now. She's like, she's like, you know, she's, she's, she knows she's putting it on thick and thinks that he's not picking up what she's putting down. Right. He's a man. Boo. Of course he is. Okay. So she asked him, Oh, how do you feel about sex about mar- before marriage? Well, you wouldn't buy a car before you test drive it. Right. Right. Of course he wants to have sex before marriage. <laughs> so. My thing is, he's not feeling you. He's just not that into you. Okay. I think it started off great. I think he was attracted to her. Um, He loved her height. Like he said, Um, they were having good conversation until she kind of just put her coochie all over the table. Like he's here looking for a relationship. She came on very strong. Not looking for just somebody to fuck. And that's what she was giving. She was giving thirsty. What I think she needed to do before she went on this date, if she was feeling frisky since it's been six months since she had some, was use her fucking toy, got a few off, and then went on her fucking date and talked like a calm, civilized fucking woman, not ready to just jump his motherfucking bones within the first 10 minutes of meeting him. Because clearly, yes, he was feeling it. He just didn't want it. The heat that she was... She was throwing exuding, it and he wasn't catching it. Put it like that. The heat that she was exuding off your body was too hot for him. He did not want it. So we see our singles going out on some dates um, that are not blind. We see AP and Demetrius. And then we also see Joy and Laverne. And I think that we will get to Joy and Laverne first. 
because that to me was the most giving. I was I was looking at Joy kind of sideways. But that's all right. She can mess with Laverne and I can have Clifton. It is what it is. You're funny. But go ahead, Nails. Get into Joy and Laverne. So basically, apparently, she has mentioned uh pottery to Laverne. And Laverne has been listening because that's where he took her. He took her to the Clay Queen Pottery. And, you know, it made her feel special. It made her, her smile. It made her feel good. Um, so they're sitting down, you know, discussing what they want from this process and what they want from a relationship. And she's just like, I just want to be happy. You know, I want unconditional, honest love and to have some laughs. And um, she just she's wants her best, her, friend, best friend. Yeah. her best friend again. And basically Laverne agrees. And he's like, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking for too. You know, um, so they get into, you know, the thick of it basically. And she's like, tell me something about you that no one else knows. And he says that um, he's never been, um, he's, he hasn't had a relationship like in that sense before he's only dated. For me, this would have definitely been a red flag. Well, we do know he was married for a little while because he has the kids. So he was married, but I guess his dating life. Do we not call that a relationship, though? Well, I think I don't know if who was he he went went out with Carmen. So I think he disclosed that to her um, when he said that. But um. Yeah, no, we know he's been married. So he's clearly, I don't think he was, I think he's referring to his dating life after his marriage, but I don't know if I would look at that as a red flag necessarily, especially if you've already been married before. But I hear what you're saying. If he had never been married at all and he's only dated, then I would be looking sideways. Um, But I mean, it's still kind of a, maybe it's a yellow flag, but I don't know if it's a- It's a a yellow flag. But I don't know if it's a red flag. It's a, it's, it's a slow down. Because the man was married. I don't know why that means anything. Um, you're not anymore. I mean, how long have you been divorced? Did you not see potential in anyone? Or were you just out here fucking? Like, were you just for the streets? I don't, I don't, Ooh. I don't know what that means. Jeez. I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, I would need some clarification. We need to clear some shit up. Um, anyways. Joy feels like, you know, them doing the pottery is very sexual and, you know, they're making some kind of like sexual innuendos talking about the clay. Very ghost. If you haven't seen the movie, it was was It's very sexy. And she feels like, you know, he's a gentleman and they can work together. And um, I don't know how I feel about them getting each other dirty. Like they got their clothes dirty. Um, I feel like. Maybe if I was on camera, I would have played it off like, <laughs> yeah, you got my clothes dirty. <laughs> off camera, I'd have been like, bitch, you know it was an accident. The fuck? Why are you putting fucking handprints all over my fucking clothes? How the fuck you know this is the last place I was going? How the fuck you know I wasn't going on a date after this? This is why, please don't ever try to take her pottery making because she doesn't get the sentiment behind it. She's more concerned about what she had on. <laughs> because I come to look cute. The fu- for one, I would have had her apron on, for sure. For two, you purposely got my clothes dirty. That would have been it for me. I'm just saying. First of all, you was out here. That's in these a deal streets. breaker. You no. First of all, you was you was out here in these streets, and now you got my clothes dirty. We got an issue, homie. Okay. Got, right look, look. Back to Clifton, we go. Trees. You are- <laughs> so then we get into AP and Demetrius. Uh, they meet up for a date. And I, we all know that she uh, expressed last episode that she was very attracted to him um, and would have loved to speak with him if he wasn't sitting at the back of the bus by itself. So Everybody they meet up. To the and, back of the um, bus. and I really got interview vibes from this from this scene it It was definitely an interview (laughs) um, it didn't really come off as any type of real connection um she lets 
Demetrius know that, you know, she, I bet, I think he asked her about how she's doing in the process. And I think she repeats what we've heard a lot of the newcomers say. I think we even touched on this when we talked to Sean, um, that it's hard to come into this process after people have already made their connections and then mm-hmm. try to establish navigate it. through yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So, because you don't um, want to step on anybody's toes. Yeah, um, unless you're unless you're Carmen, of course. So she lets us know that she doesn't need a man to complete her. Um, she said that she has no problem with her dude being or wanting to be Superman, but she is not a Lois Lane by any means. Um, basically. She lets us know she's very affectionate. Um, and then it goes into a conversation, and I hate to say it. Well, he asked her, how does that show up for you, like, in a relationship? And she talks about uh, her previous marriage. Well, that's what I was going to say, but that's my thing. He well, asked, what's your thing, No, I'm just saying, he asked you, how do you show your affection in your relationship? And you brought up your your deceased partner with rest in peace. I'm not saying that's your experience, but that's not what he asked you. Well, she did say that, um, I mean, it's her love language. So I, 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 me personally, physical touch is her love language. So you say that, right? You, I just, I feel like how could that not put a damper on the dinner When I'm trying to ask you, like, I find out your thing is physical touch and we're talking about and you think like it's not like she even talked about. The only thing that we learned was that her ex-husband was 14 years her senior. Um, She wasn't expecting it, but it happened. But there was nothing in in her response that let us know how she was affectionate to her husband. In their relationship. Think, okay. So what I think she was trying. Sense? No, no, I get what you're saying. I think maybe what she was trying to re- relay was, and maybe she was skipping around the answer, right? Yeah. Maybe what she was trying to relay was, well, I'm affectionate in relationships. Like, hey, I was in this 10 year relationship. Clearly I have to be affectionate because it worked out, but that doesn't really mean shit because I'm not affectionate. And I was in a super long relationship. So some people are okay with it or some people are, they're just the affectionate ones, but you're right. She did answer the question. And, but the thing is, I feel like, uh, Demetrius is not dumb. Um, he picked up on their vibe or lack thereof. Uh, and, uh, you know, her he answer basically well. said she, she gives the homie. It, it's not romantic. Yeah, he, he said, there's no, there's a connection, but there's not a romantic connection. And, um, I mean, you know, no, I'm, I'm just hoping that, and I'm not trying to give any spoilers, but I'm just hoping that this is not a repetitive narrative with every time someone asks you a question, that's all. Um, The guys are at a beach house on a trip, which they think is just a guy's trip, apparently. Um, and Eric goes straight to the kitchen no, he said he's in his lab. He about to cook the bin up some dinner. I would love, I would have loved to been there and get a plate of Eric's food. I'm just saying, okay. I would have, I, we know she loves food. Okay. Um, so then the guys, you know, the rest of the guys go outside and, you know, they're having a conversation about, you know, I guess back in the day when, you know, they were in relationships. Demetrius says that, you know, he thought the physical and sex was love. And right now he's just trying to make an emotional tie. Like he has grown since then. And this is what he's looking for now. Yeah. Um, what, what'd you say? No, I just said, yeah. Oh, okay. So then Tommy pulls up on the boat. Of course he hops off looking fresh, looking clean. And dancing to go go he yeah, comes dancing. he comes dancing doing his little two steps to go go um and basically you know lets the guys know hey we brought the ladies here for you too so he brings out the ladies all the guys are super excited especially wiley he's excited by seeing skin shapes and curves as he said 
Okay. All these ladies just got on their bathing suits. So everybody is happy to see what they look like, you know, under their work clothes. Okay. And um, Carmen is also checking the dudes out. She says she got her, her little antennas up. And we know Carmen is quick to go after what she wants. So yeah, bitches be ready. You best watch your man. Okay. Um, Tommy also lets them know that there will, he's not adding no more. It is now literally only quantity and I'm sorry, literally only quality and no more quantity. Okay. So this is it. Make the best of it. And, um, you know, he said, uh, shake it, don't break it. Let me ask him. So Eric is in his lab making shrimp pasta, which Zakia lets him know is his, is her favorite. Okay, she loves pasta. She loves um, shrimp pasta. Especially when it includes and, shrimp. Huh, what'd you say? No, you said she loves pasta. And I said, especially when it includes shrimp. Apparently. <laughs> so, um, you know, she's talking about, you know, if they possibly get in a relationship, you know, they could have arguments. And he ain't trying to hear possibly. Um, he said, we're getting in a relationship. So this nigga is staking his motherfucking claim okay he wants some zakia and i'm here for and it. then blue-eyed motherfucking carmen walks in okay look like she the blue-eyed bandit the blue-eyed the blue-eyed bandit you motherfucking right yes um she interrupted everything that uh they had going on and zakia you know like a lady she was like Find me later. I ain't gonna lie to you. I wouldn't be that woman. I would have said, do you guys need privacy? Do you need a minute? Now, if he would have told me yes, I would have left. And probably never talked to his ass again. Because he would have dismissed me. But I would have needed him to do it. I'm not dismissing my motherfucking self. Now, if he would have said, no, shit's good. I'm sitting my ass right fucking there. You're not interrupting. And, and I can actually respect Takia um, only because we've seen in previous seasons how some people just will not even give you the space or breathing room. So I can appreciate because my thing is he just told her he just staked his claim. So she has no reason to feel insecure by walking out. I'll let you do you, boo. And like she said, you come. It ain't by- about him. It ain't about him. It ain't about him. Mm mm. At all. Yes, you just staked your claim. So if you just staked your claim, you ain't going to tell me to fucking leave. So you just staked your claim, and I want this bitch to know that you've staked your claim. It ain't about him. It's about Carmen. So I wouldn't win no motherfucking way. So Carmen, guess what? Right now, you're wasting your fucking time. You need to toodaloo onto somebody motherfucking else. Well, as Carmen said, she was just in there too long. So we... Well, she was watching me, bitch. I guess so. Maybe you was watching too long. So, because if you was watching hard enough, you would have knew that he staked his claim and you would have saw no reason to fucking come in here. So we learned that they apparently have um, past history. Um, Me and Nell is debating about what the history is. Now, I do know that she has celebrity and uh, athletes as her clients. And as he's a celebrity chef, and I don't know if you guys know, but I actually learned this. He's a chop champion. I knew I had seen him somewhere. Um, and this man won chop. So clearly, he, he is. He's doing something. He's chop is not easy. They throw all types of shit in there. Okay. He been over here cooking duck legs and frog eyes and all types of other stuff and still made it tasty. Uh, <laughs> right? So, no. So, he apparently was hired uh, by her in the past. Um, he alludes to there's been some type of flirtation. Before. No, 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 no. So I never I wrote went anywhere. I wrote it down. I can tell you specifically what he said. He said they have vibed for years, never had a relationship um, where they wanted to be with each other, but have a, have an amazing time together. That's what he said. So he alludes that there was some flirtation. They had he vibes. to me that they fucked before. See, I didn't get that, but... To me, if you tell me that y'all never had a relationship where y'all wanted to be together, but y'all have an amazing time together, 
Amazing time doing what, sir? Doing doing what? And the fact that I'm sorry, Trace, you didn't even get to this part yet. But the fact that um, she's like, so do you like her? He's like, yeah, I like her. She's like, oh, you mean other than other than she needed a fucking ego stroke. If it's just flirting, she did. She did. She did. If it's just flirting, boo, why why do you give a fuck whether he likes a bitch more than you? And the then then proceeds to be like, so who's your number one? Who, who's number one? I don't ever say that to a nigga I ain't fucked before. I'm just saying. Because no. I want to know that you fucked me. You still think about me, so I'm number one. It's giving me they fucked. Mm. And he don't want to fuck up. What the fuck? I think he still likes Zakia more. Okay. Oh, of course. But in case it don't work out with Zakia, he still know, bitch, I still got your number and you still willing to give it up. So I'm still willing to come over. So I'm not about to fuck that up. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you you number one, because I had that already and I know I can get it again. This is all alleged. Alleged. According this to this is just this is just my call. You know, they're sitting down, um, having a conversation, and I don't know, I feel some type of way because Tina, you were brought here for Wiley. Paul, back the fuck up. Okay. She was supposed but to be we, here for Wiley. Right. But Tina, you know, lets him know that I, basically she's always dated older men. So she here for Wiley, but sorry, Wiley. She may not really be feeling you like that. And um, Paul, you know, he lets her know that he is intentional. Like he's always intentional about someone or something he's pursuing. Mm -hmm. And I guess initially he was... Uh, worried about her age because he feels like the younger they are the more trouble they are but he feels like she has an old soul and he really likes her so i don't know it might be curtains for you wiley i don't know um until she so, learns paul's personality for real um what was that i said until she learns his personality for real until he has one of his moments where he feels like he needs to read her and put her it's that in itself for coming from a man is too much for me but you know different strokes for different folks so and i hope that she's grown enough because i know she's pretty young i hope that she has grown enough to um recognize you know that and that that's not what she needs or wants um so then we have here sitting in like these hammock type chairs it's um like hammock and swings ace. um it's ace and tori and, um, you know, Tori is like trying to fill her out, get a gauge of where he's at with her. And she's like, you know, you definitely rose to the top. You you're, you know, you're the cream that rose to the top, you know. And he did a little freestyle for her, which, okay, Tori, I thought it was cute. We didn't think it was cute. You didn't think it was cute? No. You didn't think it was cute? No, I thought it was really corny, actually. Okay, it's not that what he said, Trace. It was the thought. Nobody else is really actually going to these lengths. It's the it's the okay. thought that counts. Okay. Okay. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Uh, um then we get into Tori out here writing songs for Sabrina. So I guess it is for everybody. He freestyles and makes up shit for everybody. For Sabrina, I thought he just gave her cupcakes. No, he was sitting at the piano singing her a song. And they're not even it's good. Not that's the fucked up part about it. It's not even good. That's what that's makes not the it point. So that's not the point. That's what, that's what makes it so fucking cheesy. It's not no, even good. No, you you would have just sit there like, it's not good. Like, you're I'd be horrible. like, I would have done it in a nice, humorous way, but I'd be like, oh, I appreciate the effort. It now we awful. learn. <laughs> now we learn that uh. Sabrina, you know, feels like after getting her cupcakes and the little song he performed for her on the piano, she feels like, you know, he's he may be surpassing Demetrius. She really likes him. She feels like, you know, he's a Southern gentleman. Um, and again, it was the gesture. The thought was cute. I'm not taking away from that. Mm -hmm. Again, I just saw that. Did he just free? Because I even if the freestyle was corny and he just did it for Ace. 
maybe I wouldn't be in his ass. But then when the next scene, he's at the piano doing something for Sabrina and then giving her cupcakes, I was like, Corey probably would have sang this. Corey probably would have sang the same damn song. Well, I mean, the second song will know better than the first. So there you have it. It's not about that song. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we did see Eric talking to Ace. Um, and she talks about how she was married for 10 years and um, how unfortunately. No, to AP. Oh, I'm sorry. Damn, AP. Yeah, you're right. Um, and basically talks about her late husband. I'm, just I'm, like, I'm not I'm not touching on this. No, I'm not. I'm just saying I, I think I prefaced earlier that this was unfortunately we we got on Walter for continuing to say it all last season. I actually don't think Walter said it as much as she did. I think he just let it be known. Well, well, no, and- I, I wouldn't say we got on Walter because I wouldn't allow you to do that to him. But the fans, the viewers. Twitter lit Walter's ass up. They and, felt like he kept on talking about and it? And talked about how he was trying to trauma bond to hook up with girls. And that was his way of getting women and whatever. And I'm not saying she's doing that. So again, but I'm saying it's the narrative and to continue to repeat it. And even Eric says, I understand sometimes talking about things mm-hmm. helps you get through it and get over it. But it gives me the vibe that she's not over it. That she ain't ready to love. So I'll let you get in on Miss Precious. So Precious and Demetrius, um, after Precious uh, has gone around flirting with everybody, okay, talking to, uh, what's the boy named Paul, asking him when he gonna take his shit off and uh, you know, I'm a freak for the right man, and even, even Paul, Paul was even even Paul wasn't feeling. It. Paul was like, she need to dial that back. She need to dial that down some. Like she was literally all over the place. Like and then she was in Demetrius's face. Like I, you know what he gave me? There's a dick. There's a dick. There's a dick. There's a dick. Like relax, relax. They have toys for things like this. Okay. So you can calm your shit down. She sounded like she needed to get one out in the car before she walked in the house for real, for real. Like it's, it's a lot. And I love the fact that Demetrius kind of pulled her to the side and was like, you know, he just wanted to find out like, actually she pulled him to the side. She was talking to him. She asked him, can we have a minute? And then oh. Demetrius wasn't really, they were walking and they were doing something and she was like following behind him and she was commenting on his pecs and how good they looked. Oh, and he said, are you serious? He was like, you you serious? And then she was like, oh, well, can we have a minute? And that's when she goes into the confessional and says like, she knows she has a big personality and it might be a lot. And she knows Demetrius is not that, but like, what is, there's, I mean, there's, uh, there's a difference between a big personality and I mean, constantly talking about sex, like, like, so this is, and, and I, I appreciate Demetrius in this scene where, you know, he wants to find out the depth of relationship she's looking for, because really what it's giving is you're just looking for somebody to huh. end your drought. Mm-hmm. Really? It just looks like, you, and for that, you didn't need to come on ready to live. Because if you're just looking for somebody to end your drought after six months, then who will just say that. And you can be on your merry way. And it doesn't seem like any of the men on this show, which I can appreciate, are really interested in in, in the same thing that she is. Of course, they're going to be down to get down, of course. But they're on the show and mingling to actually find someone. Well, and I think that's why I think that's why from a production standpoint, that's why they and, and, and because it was the beginning. But I think that's why they made it a point to uh, highlight that scene where they were outside talking and they and Tori was asking them, well, what's the difference between how you used to love when we were younger and now? And they all said everything was physical and we're looking for an emotional, deeper, intention Mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, we know none of them are really looking for that. And um, Demetrius lets her know 
he he wants to be intentional uh, intentional about who he talks to. So he's not really trying he's to somebody to who who's trying to pull back the layers, peel back the layers. And right now, that's not what she's doing. She's literally just putting Surf. shit out. Yeah. Put your shit out. Let me see you naked. Let me see your chest. And you know what I mean? It's it's not just about the big personality. And I, I can understand what she's saying about, you know, the big, she said the big personality uh, sometimes intimidates guys or makes them feel insecure, I think is what she said. But I don't think that's what it is because you're not the only one on the show with a big personality. Um, you're just the only person on the show that's only talking about dick or, you know, sexualizing everyone so um well, in that way because as i said to you off camera there are other couples who have sexual innuendos but it's just not it's it's reciprocated it's between it, there's a mutual interest and it is slight first flirtation versus- it's slight for flirtation but it's not like when you taking your shit off like are you going to take your shit off eventually like it's like Little comments like, oh, this is sexy. Like we're doing a sexy activity or, you know what I mean? Like, or, yeah. or, or, or usually it's him. Usually the guy makes it, making it a little bit more and whether you're comfortable or not, that's something you can decide. But we all know no man wants his wife, wife to be a freak outside their home. With Demetrius and Sabrina he decides he's going to pull her to the side. Um, and Sabrina is actually surprised. She's like, oh, you know, but happy um, because he finally gave her a minute and some time. And he takes the time to really express to her that he is feeling her. He wants to see them go somewhere. And he's trying to be intentional about her, which I thought was dope. And she was happy to hear. Um, but she also feels a tad bit conflicted um, because of her connection with Tori. Um, I'm sure the cupcakes helped. Um, and her connection <laughs> and her connection with Tori is really strong as well. However, she lets us know in the confessional that she doesn't mind a little friendly male competition over her, which I ain't mad at you, boo. I get it. I get it. As long as it don't nobody duel out here, we good. Uh, <laughs> Not duel. <laughs> Challenge you to a duel. So um, <laughs> then we get uh, apparently Laverne is not being himself and. Uh, the or lady, what we know to be himself. Or what we know to be Laverne. Um, he is kind of just standoffish. Uh, Carmen, Precious, and I forgot who the other young lady was that they were speaking with, but they all bring uh, bring up the fact that he's been so standoffish. He hasn't interacted with anybody. Um, and they're just like, uh, Precious says something to the effect of he has a God complex and thinks that yes. we're to come to him and I was like well Jesus I just think maybe he, didn't nobody say I mean well we said something but Demetrius didn't have a God complex when he sat at the back of the damn bus so why does poor little Laverne my thing so this is the the, the issue with me is and it's two women that he's not interested in so why like so that's what I'm saying okay so the the thing is this right because you made a comment about you know, other people and they're making their sexual innuendos. I think Precious doesn't pick up when people are not catching her vibe or she doesn't notice when people are not socially awkward and and people don't, and she doesn't realize when people are, don't really like her like that. Laverne does not have a, from what I can see, he does not have a God complex. Okay. He does not expect a woman to come to him because look at what he did for joy. Clearly look at how he speaks about Ace. Exactly. That does not give me God complex. He just doesn't like you. Demetrius noticed it. Demetrius noticed it and went over and spoke with him. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to take in the vitamin D. Like, I'm just, I'm just chilling. Right. And I'm not going to lie. I know. But I mean, I'm that way, but I know Laverne is super social. Right. Sometimes people go through shit. Who the fuck knows? He's right. on camera. Who knows what his life is off camera? Just because he's not socializing with you or he's not social all the time, I get it for you to be concerned, but for you to be kind of attacking him, saying he has a God complex because he's not talking, I feel like that's a bit much. I can understand the the concern and I appreciate Demetrius going to check on him like, 
yo, what's going on? You know, you're not being yourself or whatever. That's what made me actually take heed to it. Yeah. But he just don't like you, boo. He just don't like you. And I, and from what I can see, there's a lot of men here that really don't. You're beautiful. Uh, clearly, so, a, a lot of the dudes like tall women. So that's another thing going for you. But um, it's it, it sounds like it's just a, it's an issue once you open your mouth. Mm. Then we see our, I guess I can say my favorite couple so far, Clifton and Joy, uh, because I'm already. I, mean, making, I like them. I'm I already like making Clifton. them a couple. I don't. I, I'm just not hating. I like Laverne. So I just, I don't, I really don't see Joy with Laverne. I don't, I don't. Um, I hope that him and Ace go ahead and solidify what they have because Clifton and Joy is it for me. I think they have the strongest connection on the show. To me, their connection is solid like and and i love that they can still go out and date other people and then still come back to each other like yeah they, didn't do shit. they haven't missed a beat they ain't, they ain't do shit i had fun but it wasn't with you it. exactly yeah. so we see them interacting and i thought it was cute um joy he was like oh i thought she was gonna get in the pool and she was like well i did plan on getting wet and i was like okay I had to check her girl nails because I was like, okay, we can't jump on precious. She tried. She tried. We can't jump on precious and not discuss how there have been several scenes with them. Mm-hmm. And it is definitely giving sexual tension between the two of them. However, I'm as nails express, there is a difference when it is mutual and it is not given to everyone. Um and I have to respect that. She's right. Um, Precious is out here trying to, you know, give everybody that energy. And we really only see, I mean, I think Laverne says some smart stuff every now and then to her. Um, and, you know, she plays along. But it's definitely a, and, and she knows they have a sexual connection. She knows. She she expressed it, that they have sexual chemistry. So, when you have sexual, and, and like I said, this is who she's connected with from the beginning. This is not a first time blind date type shit. Okay. This is who she connected with from the beginning and it has not wavered. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, literally they both go on dates, but you don't really see them really like trying. I don't want to say trying to connect, but they don't really delve too deep into other people. Like, Paul is over here trying to figure out what the hell going on with Tina. Oh, I'm intentional, and I need your number. And He's not really here for you, boo. You don't see that with Clifton and Joy. So you can't do shit but respect it. If they have sexual chemistry, that's what they're expressing because they're not expressing it with other people. That's true. He shows back up. And lets the girls know they need to remove themselves. Exactly. Well, well, let's the men know they need to remove the girls. Um, basically, he crashes the party. You know, he's like a little bit of a Debbie Downer because everybody having a good time. They vibing. Yeah. And um, it's time to deliberate. OK, so Tommy sits down with the guys and basically, you know, he wants to know, like, who y'all vibing with? And we're going to start off with Wiley. So yeah. Wiley is talking about Tina and, you know, that she's closer to his age and, you know, he feels like there was a good vibe. And Paul, with his shady ass, goes talking about some, yeah, she has a good spirit and she's dated a lot of older guys and that's more her speed. That was shady. I was like, okay, Paul, I see you. That was, that was some shady shit. And look, you, you saw, you saw motherfucking Wiley side eyed in his ass. Yes, he was. Uh, so, you know, Eric um, and Donovan both like Dakia. Donovan lets us know that, you know, Dakia has an aura around her, which I'm not surprised. Like, I love Dakia. She's super yeah. dope. She's super cool. Um, and uh, basically, so let's talk about who they didn't like. Yeah. Get into the okay, so well, no, 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 we also have to, so... Uh, oh, oh yes talks about his connection with joy that's still his strongest connection mm-hmm. then laverne pipes up and lets us know you know although he is still very connected with ace him and joy have something special he said 
that's his rap song and she does her beat and or he does his uh you know line and she jumps in and that's how he feels about her um he said that's mine and then clifton in the confessional was like no bro that's mine so we see there's some other friendly competition going on um tori lets us know that his connection obviously is sabrina um and demetrius pipes up and is like well you know me and sabrina really feeling each other too and Tori is not but, here for you. And, and look, Demetrius was like, well, but, I mean, he didn't say it. He said it in the confessional. He made the best man win. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, as far as who they didn't like, I feel like it was kind of like a general consensus, um, you know, with Precious. A lot of them feel like there was no deep connection. Mm-hmm. We're not surprised about that because she just wants somebody to go deep. Um, and with AP, oh. um, what was that? I said, well, you shady bitch. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, AP, you know, she kind of kicked herself in the ass by telling uh, um, um, Clifton that um, he was like a brother to her. Oh, that. And okay. um, yeah, basically there was no no connection with Eric as well. So or then, Demetrius. Oh, yes. So then um, Tommy lets them know, look, normally I would go out here and let the ladies know who you chose to go home, but I ain't doing that shit tonight. Y'all gonna have to do it. And Paul is acting like he got PTSD, okay? He's like, anybody but me, I ain't doing it. And I feel like it's after, what? what's the girl's name? What's her, what's her name, Brittany? No. The one that he had to eliminate. Tiffany? Oh, yeah, Tiffany. Why do I keep on calling her Brittany? I don't know. Okay, oh. Tiffany, Um, after he had to eliminate her, he's like, anybody but me. I don't want to do that shit. It is a horrible place to be in to fucking eliminate anybody else. Anybody else. So Demetrius, you know, with his stand-up ass, um, decided, I guess, he was going to do it. And who he called up, y'all? Are we really surprised? Precious, Precious. of course. And AP. And these motherfuckers did a goddamn cliffhanger. And we won't see. So we ain't gonna find out who the fuck they picked until next episode. Straight Squad, y'all gonna have to let us know who the fuck y'all think they picked. Because we got our own opinions. But we wanna know who y'all think and why. Yes. Or who the hell y'all think should go home. Exactly. Make suggestions, Shade Squad. We appreciate it. Um, so yeah, no, that was pretty much it. And we're gonna get to they gave us a preview of next next episode. We don't get to see who left, but we see Carmen and who was it on a date? Um, who was Carmen on a date with when she was eating a pickle? I can't remember. Uh, I just remember where they were. Yes, because that's we, all I that's, that's what I cared about. So um <laughs> And then we also basically see some drama go down with Tori uh, and Sabrina because he's feeling some type of way that she's starting to while well, they know, were playing a game more interest like. into Demetrius and he kind of wants her to be intentional and he kind of wants her to himself. So and and you know next time next week a man is going home so. it, it may be interesting. Um, mm. Tori, you might mm. not want to press too mm. hard. Mm, or mm, he look mm. from the looks of it, he may self eliminate. I mean, who knows? He still likes some um, ace, so we shall see. I damn you guys, thank you so guys much for tuning in to another review of Ready to Love. This is what season five, episode four. Yes, it is. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, So please make sure before you guys head out that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And make sure that you are following us on all social media platforms. And we will catch you next week for another episode and review. We will catch you guys next week. Thank you. And we love you. Bye. Bye. Front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Eye front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Hey.